Robotics is surging in 2025, driven by breakthroughs in AI and engineering. 2025 is shaping up to be the year of the robot, and humanoid robots are a major focus. Companies are racing to deploy human-like machines for labor, service tasks, and household help. I'll watch you while you sleep. I mean, watch over you while you sleep. The four-legged quadruped robots are becoming more agile and affordable, finding uses from industry to defense. Even the militaries are advancing robotic platforms for reconnaissance and combat support. Today, let's dive into what's happening in the world of robots and why we might see millions of humanoids hit the streets within the next few years. Humanoid robotics rising. Humanoid robots, machines with human-like form, torso, arms, legs, they're walking upright, they made significant strides in 2025. Thanks to converging advances in AI, sensors, materials, several startups and tech giants have moved from concept prototype to actual real-life working models. In 2024, an analyst projected the humanoid robot market could grow from about 6 billion in 2024 to 38 billion by 2035. The goal is to deploy robots that can work safely alongside people in factories, warehouses, and even homes to address labor shortages and take on dangerous and repetitive tasks. Subscribe or I unleash the hypno drones. First up, we have Tesla Optimus, the Tesla bot. One little known feature of the Optimus bot is that it can transform into a Tesla. Tesla's humanoid robot Optimus, nicknamed the Tesla bot, is probably one of the most high profile projects. In late 2024, Tesla revealed prototypes walking steadily and even operating outdoors. In one demo, Optimus was shown walking autonomously on uneven outdoor ground and ringing a bell, notably doing so without using its vision cameras, instead relying on onboard sensors and a neural network for balance. Elon Musk has been touting Optimus as a future multi-trillion dollar business and very ambitiously saying that Tesla could start limited production as soon as 2025. He suggested the company might build around 1,000 units in 2025 and eventually sell the robots for $25,000 to $30,000 each. While some of the early demonstrations were teleoperated, meaning they were guided by a human remotely, which led to some skepticism about the true autonomy of these robots, Tesla has been hard at work and rapidly improving the bot's AI. Recent updates show Optimus exploring unseen indoor spaces and avoiding obstacles using neural network vision, as well as a more confident bipedal walk. Multiple Optimus units can also share maps and learn collectively from each other so that a fleet of robots can build a shared understanding of their environment. And Tesla is focusing the Optimus robot on practical everyday work. The videos from late 2024 demonstrate the robot picking up and carrying boxes, climbing a few stairs, and even autonomously plugging itself into a wall charger when its battery runs low. In a stage demo, Optimus robots serve drinks to Tesla staff, hinting at future service roles. Now, the Optimus robot's still in development, but Tesla's fast iteration and mass manufacturing expertise could make it one of the first humanoids produced at scale. Musk even mused that by 2040, there might be more humanoid robots than people, which is highlighting Tesla's long-term vision. Next, we have Figure AI. Figure AI is an emerging startup dedicated solely to humanoid robots. Its robot, tentatively called Figure 01, is a human-sized biped designed to perform work in environments built for people. One of their big focus will be manufacturing and more commercial applications. Figure gained attention 2024 for securing an enormous funding round, $675 million. This put the company valuation around $2.6 billion. Investors included some heavyweights like Jeff Bezos, OpenAI, NVIDIA, Intel, and even a fund associated with Amazon. So Bezos is, is very excited about this, which makes sense if you think about it, how much these humanoid robots would help Amazon in pretty much every aspect of what they do. Initially, Figure was reported to be in talks for 500 million led by Microsoft and OpenAI, but the round grew larger, underscoring the excitement around this technology. One reason for the excitement is Figure's partnership with OpenAI. After having paused its own robotic research, OpenAI signaled a re-entry into robotics by teaming up with Figure. Now, very, very recently, Brett Adcock, the CEO of Figure, did say that they are no longer having that agreement. Figure's going its own way. OpenAI is going its own way. And it seems like OpenAI is hiring 
people for roles to develop their own robotics. This is still brand new. We don't have too many details about it. But as Brett Acock says, there's a tremendous advantage in embedding large language models in robots to give them semantic understanding of human instructions. In other words, Figures Humanoid will leverage advanced AI to better understand natural language commands and complex tasks. OpenAI's head of product said, we've always planned to come back to robotics. We've figured to explore what humanoid robots can achieve when powered by highly capable multimodal models. A few other notable startups that are doing humanoid robots are number one, Agility Robotics and Digit. Agility Robotics bipedal robot Digit is a two-legged machine with arms, roughly the size of a adult human, and it's built primarily for work in warehouses, lifting and moving totes and packages. In fact, Amazon has started testing Digit for potential use in its fulfillment centers. The company is notable for being one of the first to attempt mass production of humanoid robots. In late 2023, they announced RoboFab, the world's first dedicated humanoid robotic factory in Salem, Oregon. And the factory will initially produce hundreds of digits per year and then scale up to 10,000 plus robots per year at full capacity. They're hoping to have general availability in 2025. We also have One X Technology, formerly Halati Robotics, and their robot One X. It's a Norwegian startup that caught attention when OpenAI led a 23.5 million investment round in its in 2023. Its first model, Eve, is a humanoid on wheels, used for things like security, patrolling offices at night, opening doors, and moving objects for security and hospitality use. One X's standout innovation is its actuator technology. It developed an extremely high torque-to-weight servo motor that mimics the qualities of human muscles, allowing for more smoother, softer motions. They also partnered up with OpenAI to imbue these robots with advanced intelligence. Although I have not heard any news on that front quite yet, or rather since then. But the company is now working on Neo, a bipedal humanoid intended for home and consumer use. The other big rockstar robotic company is actually out of China. It's called Unitree, and it emerged as a leader in making quadruped robots accessible. They initially built their reputation on selling agile, dog-sized robots at a fraction of the cost of earlier Western models. By 2025, Unitree's lineup has expanded with both consumer-grade and industrial-grade quadrupeds. At CES 2025, Unitree showcased its latest offerings, including the Unitree Go 2, a consumer-focused robotic dog, and a variant called Go 2 that features wheels on its legs for hybrid rolling and walking motion. What really churned people's heads were Unitree's displays of agility. Their go-to robot can perform dynamic tricks. It can do backflips, humanoid-style handstands, and it just seems to have a lot of stability and agility across a lot of different environments. Now, these maneuvers are not pre-programmed, but they're driven by deep reinforcement learning policies, showing the power of RL, reinforcement learning, in teaching these robots how to move about. And now Unitree is venturing into humanoid robots as well. In 2024, they quietly launched a bipedal robot called G1. At CES 2025, Unitree unveiled the H1 humanoid. This one stunned observers by performing a standing backflip. The H1 can also run at 4.3 meters per second over 15 kilometers an hour. So that's over 9 miles per hour making it one of the fastest humanoid robots. It also has the claim to fame of being the world's first electric-powered humanoid to achieve a backflip. Unitree is signaling that it intends to compete in humanoids as well using fully electric actuators, which is in contrast to some robots like Sanctuaries, which use hydraulics. Next up, we have Boston Dynamics. And this was the original company that popularized uh, these... Uh, humanoid robots through a number of viral videos of them running around, doing dances, doing backflips, etc. Watch these robots do parkour is endlessly entertaining. And in 2025, they remain the gold standard in dynamic robotics. Their spot robot, a yellow dog-like quadruped, is widely used in industries and research. In fact, if you've seen Meta's recent project, the partner project, that teaches these robots to work alongside humans to help them complete tasks, to work cooperatively. I believe that's the exact robot that was used for a lot of those demonstrations and for training. And Spot is being employed for tasks like routine inspections of factories, oil rigs, to map dangerous areas and do security patrols. It's prized for its reliability, 
Spot can autonomously walk predefined routes, avoid obstacles, and even ride elevators, all while carrying payloads like cameras, sensors, etc. One thing that Boston Dynamics does not do is weaponize Spot. The company has an ethics policy against mounting weapons on its robot, focusing instead on civilian applications. And of course, we have our military robotics and defense applications. Robots are, of course, increasingly being adapted for military and defense purposes. Uncrewed ground vehicles, including legged robots and traditional wheeled or tracked drones, these are very attractive for missions that are dull, dirty, or dangerous. Recent developments are showing a trend towards weaponizing robotic platforms, which raises new ethical and strategic questions. Both United States and China in particular are investing in robotic systems for the battlefield, including quadrupedal robots, often dubbed robot dogs. One notable player in the space is Ghost Robotics, a U.S. company whose vision series of quadrupeds directly competes with Boston Dynamics Spot, but with a focus on defense and security clients. Ghost Robotics Vision 60 is a dog-sized four-legged robot that the U.S. Air Force and Army have tested for perimeter security and scouting. In 2020, Ghost Robots participated in an Air Force exercise helping secure an airfield during a simulated attack. The U.S. military has evaluated these robots to remotely inspect potentially dangerous areas before sending in the human troops. Unlike Boston Dynamics, Ghost Robotics has been open to weaponizing its robots. In late 2021, Ghost attracted attention and quite a bit of controversy for unveiling a model with a sniper-style rifle on its back. The rifle module called SPUR, Special Purpose Unmanned Rifle, was developed by Sword International and mounted atop a Ghost Vision 60 unit. The system fires a 6.5 mm Creedmoor cartridge and can be remotely operated. Ghost Robotics then CEO emphasized that any armed robot would always have an operator in the loop and that they were not giving the robot autonomous target engagement capabilities. In other words, this robot would be a remote controlled weapon platform similar to a mobile turret under human supervision. But of course, many people are debating and alarmed over how such systems might be used or perhaps misused on future battlefields. China has been even more aggressive in showcasing armed robot dogs. In 2024, Chinese state media revealed a machine gun equipped quadruped developed for the People's Liberation Army. In a televised exercise, the Golden Dragon 2024 drills, the PLA soldiers demonstrated using the robot dog to clear building. The armed robot entered a doorway ahead of the soldiers as a scout and was later shown firing bursts of bullets while advancing on targets. The Chinese robot carried what appeared to be the standard QBZ-95 assault rifle, and officials described it as a new teammate that can do recon and provide covering fire in urban combat. This isn't China's first foray. Back in 2022, a Chinese defense contractor, Kestrel Defense, showed a concept where a drone airdropped a robot dog armed with a light machine gun onto a rooftop as part of an urban warfare experiment. They've also tested mounting grenade launchers and even small loitering munitions on quadruped bots. These developments indicate China is prototyping ways to integrate armed robots into infantry tactics especially for risky first entry or sentry roles. And of course, beyond quadrupeds, militaries are using various other robotic systems. Heavily funded programs exist for unmanned ground vehicles to carry gear, scout, or even engage targets. Russia deployed a robot tank called Run-9 in Syria. There's also work on autonomous or semi-autonomous convoys, especially trucks that drive themselves to deliver supplies under fire. And in explosive ordnance disposal, so bomb squads kind of disarming the existing bombs, robots have been the standard equipment for decades. Wheeled robots to inspect and neutralize bombs. A trend that continues with newer models that are more mobile and capable. Another facet of military robotics is exoskeletons and wearable robotics for soldiers, aimed at enhancing human capabilities. The U.S., for instance, has tested powered exoskeleton suits that help soldiers carry loads or reduce fatigue. While no powered exoskeleton is a standard issue yet, research is ongoing to improve power sources and ergonomics. These systems blur the line between human and robot, effectively a cyber-like augmentation. So we don't have anything quite like the power armor in the Fallout series, but we are working on it. War. War never changes.
Not mentioned in this video is Anduril Industries, founded by Polymer Lucky. We may do a video later talking about specifically that company. Now, of course, we have to talk about the open source projects and industry trends, because one of the big and, and very interesting sort of trend that's shaping space here with the robotics is the open source movement. In the past, building a robot's software stack from scratch was incredibly expensive, incredibly time consuming, and would make it impossible for a, a small team or just one person to create something like that from scratch. Today, that's different. Developers have access to robust open source frameworks, libraries, and even hardware design that dramatically accelerates innovation. One influential uh, middleware, this open source middleware, as it's referred to as, is ROS, Robot Operating System, an open source middleware that has become a sort of de facto standard in robotics. ROS provides a collection of drivers, algorithms, and tools, so researchers and companies that don't have to reinvent the wheel for basic common functionalities. So things like sensor integration, mapping, motion planning, by making it open source, by allowing the community to use it how they will, allows people to kind of uh, not reinvent the wheel and just start building on top of it. According to one market analysis, by last year, roughly 55% of commercial robots shipped worldwide included at least some ROS code. ROS has evolved into ROS2 for improved performance in industrial settings, and big tech companies like Microsoft, Amazon, and NVIDIA actively support ROS contributing to its capabilities. Beyond software, we also have open source hardware projects that are also leaving a big mark. For example, the Open Dynamic Robot Initiative, ODRI. It's a collaboration among researchers, which released designs for low-cost quadruped robot called Solo. The Solo 8 and Solo 12 robots can be built from off-the-shelf and 3D printed parts. The schematics and all the code, that they're openly published. What this allows to do is to have university labs and even hobbyists on a budget to experiment with legged locomotion, something that used to require an expensive proprietary machine. So as you can see, robotics is uh, pushing forward on all fronts, both for in-home use, manufacturing, other commercial applications, as well as security, military. We're seeing many open source projects, including Meta's uh, partner for human robot collaborators, them working kind of in tandem to achieve tasks. And we're seeing a bigger and bigger kind of overlap between large language models and robotics. The artificial intelligence in large language models have enabled robots to be smarter, better able to respond to commands, better able to plan things out. And 2025, it seems like it's going to be the year where more and more of this stuff is going to start hitting the shelves, so to speak. We're going to see more of this stuff working in factories and warehouses. We might even see a few for in-home use. Certainly, we're seeing more and more of the robot dogs walking around carrying people's groceries. Again, it's still a rare sight. I've never seen one in real life, but you're beginning to see it in various social media clips and probably will start seeing it on the streets sometime this year. But let me know what you think about this whole thing. Are you excited? Scared? Would you have one of these robots uh, walking around your house? Especially if it relied on a proprietary code and large language model that you couldn't really look into, wasn't open source. The H1 robot from Unitree, that's, that's almost six feet tall and a bit over 100 pounds. It can also do backflips and is probably faster than you are. So on one hand, if you have one of these in your house and the US-China relations ever really go south, you do run the risk of this thing being a sleeper agent that's been mapping your house and tracking your movements and getting to learn your sort of living patterns for the last several months. But on the other hand, you no longer have to do dishes or laundry or any cleaning whatsoever. What's the worst that can happen? I'm not going to lie. I am uh, conflicted. I could see both sides of the argument on this one. Let me know what you think. If you made it this far, thank you so much for watching. My name is Wes Roth, and I'll see you next time. Slash salute.